basically what we're going to do here is I've already unclipped it, but yours should have some sort of clip like this that you're going to be able to pull off. Some of them have like a squeeze tab. You squeeze and you pull. But for the most part, they'll clip in just like this and you can pull it out. Um, if yours has batteries like this, try changing out the batteries first. Sometimes it can just be as simple as that. But what we're doing in this case is we're trying to see if between the thermostat and the unit, it is either not receiving power or there could potentially be a bad thermostat not calling for cooling or heating. And it can work on one setting, but not on the other. So say if it works on heating, but not on cooling or reverse it. Once we have removed that, we've tested and seen if it's potentially the batteries and it's not. What we're then going to do is bypass the thermostat by jumping these wires together. Now you're gonna have to be very careful not to touch wires to short them out. Now, before we begin, uh, this is something that I try to point out in my videos for a reason. A lot of people ask me what color wire and the thing is most of the time when you see Y here it is a yellow wire but clearly you can see that is not a yellow wire so remember wire colors mean nothing and this is the reason why we trace our wires back to the source now R is red which in most cases is correct. G is green. And of course, W, which is kind of hard to see, but it's behind this wire here. Uh, w is white. But again, we cannot trust that. So when we are going to our unit and we're looking at the wire color, the wire color could change at the unit where it's wire nutted to go back to the thermostat. So keep that in mind. Anytime you're tracing back wires to the thermostat or wires from the thermostat to the inside unit. What we're gonna need when we begin to pull the thermostat wires out is just a little small flathead. Um, some of you have the larger handle, uh, smaller flatheads as well and we're just going to unscrew these lugs here and pull the wires out that we are going to bypass to test and see if the thermostat is bad. Now as we're here you might notice there's a jumper between R and RC. Totally normal. There's a few different applications where you won't see that jumper and when you purchase your thermostats to replace them, it will tell you to remove the jumper. So just keep that in mind, even though you see the R and the RC, you can see there's a jumper here. So that wire is going to go to R, which R is your hot. So since we're trying to bypass at the thermostat, we're going to first remove R, and then we're going to go to Maybe if our fan isn't coming on at all, we would jump R to G. And all that does is just tell the fan motor to come on in your indoor unit. Uh, we call that a blower motor. So if your blower motor isn't coming on at all, and you jump R to G and it does come on, then you know that the thermostat is not sending the signal for the fan motor to come on. Same with R to Y, which is the call for cooling, or R to W, which is the call for heat. What we're doing here is we're essentially bypassing the thermostat, sending the call or the signal to turn on your cooling, your heating, or if you're just wanting to circulate air in your home, the fan. So I'm going to remove this and we're gonna say call for heat. So I'm going to jump the R to the W 
and should tell me right away if the unit comes on like it should or if nothing happens. Process of elimination, if I jump these wires together and nothing happens at the unit, then two things are happening. Um, obviously, there could be more than that, but the two most common would be that there's either a broken wire from the thermostat to the unit, or something is going on at the unit itself that is keeping it from coming on. Now, obviously, while you're doing this, you don't want to touch the wires. So keep that in mind when you are pulling the wires out. It's good to cut the power and then remove the wires and, you know, make sure that you're kind of keeping them separated, insulated. You can put tape if you'd like. So that way there's no chance of you actually shorting several things, control board, shorting the thermostat, um, that protects it from shorting out, you know, something at the unit or, you know, fusing wires or something like that happening to where now your unit won't come on, popping a fuse on the control board, et cetera. So always practice safety with any electrical and make sure that you're cutting the power to this before you remove the wires. If we're going to remove this, make sure we don't touch it to any other wires except the one that we're wanting to actually call for heating or cooling. And then carefully turn on the power, make sure nothing else is touching to see if indeed it does turn the unit on. So now we've pulled the W, which is the call for heat, and we've pulled R, which is hot. We're going to jump those two together and see if our unit turns on. Now you can take these off, you can wire nut them together, you can use gator clips, uh, just as long as they're not going to short out against anything, it's fine. Again, it's not going to hurt too bad if you get shocked by 24 volts, but you know, don't play with electricity kids just make sure that everything is insulated like it should be and it's not going to short out against it so now what we've done is we have jumped and bypassed the thermostat with the call for heating now keep in mind a lot of units have a delay and you know depending on what kind of motor you have it could be upwards of, I've seen some for 60 seconds, 30 seconds, even a minute and a half. So, you know, give it a little bit before jumping to conclusions. And that's because a lot of times on boards, there's also a delay. So keep that in mind when you're testing, give it some time. Don't automatically assume it's bad because it's not coming on. So give it a little bit check the unit or if someone is actually at the thermostat doing this and you're at the unit, again, just give it time. If it does come on and it stays on and it functions exactly like it should, your thermostat is bad. This should be a duh moment, but when you do replace these thermostat wires and put them back in there, just make sure you do push them down in there good. Tighten your connection, a good snug connection. And once you believe or feel like it is tightened exactly like it should be, see if wires kind of moving a little bit as we get it snug in there and then we can pull on it and make sure it is not going to come out so once we know those are nice and snug back where they should be we would continue with our troubleshooting if we have jumped around the thermostat and the problem still continues.
Okay, a note to make for electric heating systems. So if you have a single stage uh, electric heat unit, meaning you don't use gas for your heat, when you're jumping these together at the thermostat and not at the unit itself, you have to have the fan on with it. So you would be jumping your G, your W, and your R for your heating. If you're jumping together for cooling, you would jump R, Y, and G. Electric heat systems have to have the call for fan as well when jumping the wires together. If you don't do that for electric systems, you're going to get a false diagnostic because you're not jumping all the wires together that you need to. Okay, now we've talked about the unit and how to test at the thermostat to make sure that we can rule out the thermostat for the reason why you're not getting the call for heat or cool. It's important to note in any situation, yours can look like a light switch like this. Uh, it could have a plug. Just make sure you go to the main source of power for your unit and you have turned it off. Very important. Do not electrocute yourself. Now, obviously, every unit's going to be different. Yours could be up in the attic with a horizontal application. Uh, this is in a closet. You can see that we have our drain line kind of coming over here, which is in front of the door. And with furnaces, we are going to have to first remove the furnace section panel and then remove the blower section panel to get to our thermostat wires. And if your unit has a control board, uh, the control board is going to be where your blower motor housing is in this case below. Unless of course you have a downflow in which it would switch because your air is going to go down under your home and through the floor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm first going to remove this top panel, which should be on a lip. You might have to undo some screws more often than not. I haven't. A lot of times they'll have this little handy lift here that you can lift up like this. And then just carefully, carefully pull this out. So now we're here. We're going to go ahead and remove this. And for the most part, units are going to look very similar to this. Now, if you've got an older unit, uh, it could look different or you might not have a control board altogether. So here where we have these big bundle of wires, this is going to be where we're going to jump around our thermostat once we've jumped the wires together at the thermostat and still nothing comes on. So at that point we can, you know, possibly chalk that up to a broken wire from the thermostat to the unit or something within the unit itself. Always make sure first and foremost, our power is turned off at the unit itself. And then we're going to check the two power wires coming from the door switch with our meter to make sure that that is not sending high side power as well, both for safety when we're there at the unit and bypassing as we diagnose a potential bad thermostat. All right, so as we're at the unit, safety first, make sure whether you have a plug or a light switch that it is turned to off here. Um, what we're going to do just to make sure, you know, double sure that our unit is off is we're going to come down to the door switch where your 
120 comes to you here plugged in. Now some of yours are wires and you're going to have to follow them back to a wire nut to make sure that the power is off. Uh, if your meter can do non-contact voltage like this one, it's an easy way to figure out if you are actually getting power to it. So you can flip it over to non-contact voltage, set it here. If it doesn't go off, obviously you don't have power. Now in a second, I'll show you what happens when we do turn the power on. And I need to uh, get those plugged in so they're not just chilling. Okay, now that we know those are attached and secured, I'm going to turn the power back on. Uh, if you have a non-contact voltage setting, just do that. And there you go. Now you know. And that's a lot easier. You can see nothing. Now if you don't have that, you're just going to flip your meter over to volts AC. And okay, power is off. All right, and we're going to remove our wires here safely for obvious reasons. Once these are secure, they're not touching anything, we're going to take our leads here and put them in each wire, turn our meter to volts AC, and make sure there is not voltage. All right. We have our meter on volts AC or the V with the squiggly line above it. And obviously it would be beeping right now if there were 120. But I'm going to flip mine on just to show you what it would do if you do still have voltage sending to it. So there we are and we know. Okay, boys and girls, now that we know our high side power is not coming through and we are not yet calling for heating or cooling, we're going to take a look here at our thermostat wires. Now, remember before where we talked about making sure the colors add up here? If anyone has, say, come and worked on your unit and messed with the thermostat wires, Sometimes they just put the wires back in the wrong spot and your unit now is not working. So remember, if this color matches the color that's coming from the thermostat, then you know potentially it is wired correctly. So we see, okay, yes, the wires match colors here. Great. Now let's see if we can rule out the thermostat or the board or the unit itself. So let's get ourselves all set up with our meters. Um, you're, again, you don't have to have this meter. Just make sure you have one that can read volts, AC, and uh, you know continuity and whatnot. So we're gonna have our meters here. We're going to turn them to volts AC, and we're going to see what's happening when we bypass the thermostat at the board and see if everything comes on. Okay, now, so once again, we know where all these wires are going. We're making sure that they are pushed out in a way that they're insulated. They're not going to touch anything. You can wrap them with electrical tape. Just make sure, you know, put wire nuts. Just make sure they are out of the way for this test. Now, again, what we're doing here is we are bypassing the thermostat to see if that could be the issue. Or in this case, it can also be that one of these wires have broken, in which case you're going to have to follow them back and see if one of them has been chewed or broken or shorted, any number of things. Um, make sure that you do check your fuse at your control board. Some fuses 
are not on the control board themselves. Sometimes they can go from the transformer here to one of these 24 volt wires here. So if you see something like this, but it is on a wire instead, that can be your fuse. So we're going to pull this fuse out and make sure that it has not popped just to roll that out. All right, well now that we have all of our thermostat wires removed, we can put jumpers, uh, gator clips, paper clips, pretty much anything you'd like to bypass the thermostat on here. And uh, make sure that you tighten everything down first. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down so we make a good connection. Before we jump our other side to if we want to check the call for heat on W or the call for cool on Y, we need to make sure our door switch is actually pushed in before we do that so our unit doesn't fault out. Okay, now we're going to carefully turn our power back on. And obviously we've got this all open, so we're going to have to push our door switch in first before we put the clip on there. So just go ahead and tape that down. Um, you can have someone hold it, you can hold it. Just make sure that is secure in place before you put your gator clip on the call for heat, cool, or fan on. All right, what I'm going to do here, because our gas is actually cut off, we're only using electric heat now, so I'm just going to call for fan on. So I'm going to come over here and push in my door switch. And you can see our LED is on, letting us know, hey, I have high side power. R is going to be our hot for 24 volt. And now we're going to come over and jump it to G, which is just fan on. We're going to hear that click, and there we go. You can hear that our fan is coming on. If your unit is not coming on at all, and you have done this test, and it does come on, and you know you have power, and your board light comes on, so you know the fuse is good, and you are getting power to the board. At that point, we'd be looking at a broken wire from the unit to the thermostat, or a bad thermostat. And of course, last, once you're done with your testing and everything, just make sure everything is back snug and secure exactly as it should be.